Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with an algebraic expression. So we're given that x plus 1 over x is equal to 2 times cosine theta, and we're supposed to evaluate x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. Sorry, it's kind of backwards. I asked the question first because, anyways, <laughs> I just did it that way. So, so we're going to evaluate, we're given this, and obviously the answer is going to be in terms of theta, right? We're not uh, expecting a numerical answer, but here's the thing. This is kind of like a general form of an interesting type of question or problem that you can pose, such as, for example, if cosine theta is equal to 1 half, which means theta could be 60 degrees, right, or 300 degrees. Uh, from here, you can basically get a different problem like x plus 1 over x is equal to 1, and then find x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. Or if you set cosine theta equal to root 3 over 2, then this is going to equal root 3, so on and so forth. You see, you can generate so many different problems from this problem. Even set it equal to 0 and see what happens, because that's going to be pretty interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution from Wolfram Alpha first. So Wolfram Alpha gave me the following answer, and take a good look at this, because later on we're going to look at our answer, and hopefully... Uh, you can compare it to this one. Take a good picture. Ready, set, go. Okay. Now, we're going to be presenting, or I'm going to be presenting, two solutions. And here's the first one. So remember, our original problem was x plus 1 over x equals 2 cosine theta. And I'm supposed to evaluate the sum of the cubes in terms of theta. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this into a quadratic equation. Right? Multiply everything by x. And then we get x squared plus 1 equals 2x cosine theta. And now this is quadratic in x. Hopefully you can see that. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. x squared minus 2 cosine theta times x. And I kind of want to emphasize the fact that this is quadratic in x. So that I can kind of use a different color here. And then my constant obviously is going to be 1, right? So this is the quadratic equation in x, and since this is quadratic, I can use the quadratic formula. If it, this was a quintic, I couldn't use the quintic formula because, is it too complicated? No, it doesn't exist. So x equals negative b, 2 cosine theta, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 cosine squared theta, so far so good, minus 4ac, a is 1, so it's just going to be minus 4c, but c is 1, so it's just going to be minus 4. <laughs> Great. Don't you like it when a and c are both 1? And that's all divided by 2. Awesome. Here's the interesting part. 4 cosine squared minus 4 can actually be factored. So let me go ahead and do that first. 4 cosine squared theta minus 4 can be written as 4 times cosine squared theta minus 1. Wait a minute. We have a Pythagorean identity, don't we? And that looks like this, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So 1 minus cosine squared is going to be the same as sine squared and vice versa. So this is nice, but the expression that I have is not that. It's cosine squared minus 1. The other way around, in other words, it's the opposite. Therefore, this is equal to negative sine squared theta. Uh-oh, we got a negative inside the radical. Not only that, but it's also squared. Cool. So now I'm going to replace the radical with the square root of negative sine squared theta. But wait a minute, I had a 4 there, so I took it out, so it's going to become a 2 outside. All right, here we go. We're good now. And all of that is divided by 2, so 2s are going to cancel out anyways. Let's go ahead and cancel them out. We get cosine theta plus minus the square root of negative sine squared theta. Well, if I had the square root of sine squared... I know how to square root it because it will be plus minus sine theta with the absolute values, right? But this one is the square root of a negative quantity or a non-positive quantity. <laughs> it can be zero too, right? But if it's not zero, then it's negative. What am I going to do then? We're going to use complex numbers. Yes, that's why they're awesome. And basically, you can write this as negative 1 times sine squared. And the square root of negative 1 is going to be plus minus i, but plus minus is already there. So we can basically write this as cosine theta plus minus i times sine theta. Isn't that awesome? Wait a minute. What was I looking for? x? No. 
I was looking for x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, but I got x, which is cool, because I can now find the sum of the cubes. Wait a minute, which x value are we going to use? The answer, it doesn't matter. And you can verify that very easily. If x is taken to be the plus sign, and then 1 over x is just going to be, remember, this is a complex number with modulus 1, so its reciprocal is going to be its conjugate. Yay! That's what's so nice about these. If you multiply these two together, you're going to 1 on both sides. You can check it out. Now, we're going to cube them. So x cubed is going to be cosine of the Moivre's formula. That's how I can say it. Cosine 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. So all you have to do is triple the argument, which is theta. And that's all you have to do. And then 1 over x cubed is going to be similar. It's going to be a minus sign, of course, because that's the conjugate. So if you cube the conjugate, you get the, the conjugate of the cube. And when you add these up, x cubed plus 1 over x cubed sine 3 3 theta is going to cancel out, leaving us with 2 cosine 3 theta. And that would actually be the answer in terms of theta. Remember, we had x plus 1 over x equals 2 cosine theta. And then when we cubed it or added the cubes, we just had to triple the angle. We didn't mess with the 2. It just stays like that. That's what's special about these types of problems. Okay? Ready for the second method? Okay. Let's proceed. So for my second method, I'm going to do the following. I know that x plus 1 over x is equal to 2 cosine theta. And by the way, let me tell you something about the first method before I go to get into the second. Instead of using the quadratic formula, you could also do the following, which would give you the same result. Uh, at the very beginning, you could just say, hey, suppose x is equal to a plus bi, and then find the conjugate. Obviously, in this case, I mean the reciprocal, it's just going to be 1 over this, but it's going to give you a squared plus, actually, the other way around. I, I'm supposed to put the conjugate here. a squared minus plus, <laughs> okay, never mind. I get, I'm confusing myself. It's a minus bi divided by the square root or absolute value squared, which is a squared plus b squared. And then by adding these, you're getting 2 cosine theta, but no imaginary part here. So you can kind of take care of a, b, hopefully, and then go from there, right? And as you can see here, anyways, let me not say it. Hopefully, you can take it from here. Make sense? Okay, cool. That's just an alternative um, way for number uh, method number one. So here's what we're going to do. Let's cube both sides because we're looking for sum of cubes. We're going to get some extra terms, but that's okay. This will give me from a plus b cubed, uh, the version that I use with the cubic formula, it's going to be x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 3ab, which is 3 times x times 1 over x, but that's just going to be a 3, times a plus b, which is x plus 1 over x. It's supposed to be 8 cosine cubed theta. Wow, that looks very different, doesn't it? Now, here's the thing. We know x plus 1 over x is 2 cosine theta, don't we? So this is 2 cosine theta multiplied by a 3, and this is what we're looking for. So let's isolate it. That's going to equal... 8 cosine cubed theta minus 6 cosine theta. Now, you might be wondering, didn't we get something else like 2 cosine 3 theta? Yes and no. They're not different. Because if you take out a 2, this becomes 4 cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta. And hopefully, you are familiar with the triple angle formulas because this is just an expression for cosine 3 theta, which gives us the exact same solution. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.